Hi, hi, hello, hello. We have a new chapter of the One Punch Man remake. Um, I'm a little confused. There's this other scanlation group called Little Miss and Good Sir, which is, well, it's a name. Um, and they uploaded just a bunch of One Punch Man chapters recently. So I don't know if this is some other group. It looks like they also do like One Piece, Q, Chainsaw Man, like really high profile series. I don't know, I'm very confused by this. Like, why would you start a scanlation group to do things that are already being scanlated by another group? Things that are extremely popular and already receive pretty good scanlations? I don't know, I'm confused. It doesn't matter. Um, I guess more people working on scanlation is always good in some capacity. Anyways, we're going to read the R One Punch Man scanlations. Uh, because they have been consistently fantastic and, uh, um, Vibhav, I, I'm sorry, I'm never going to be pronouncing your name correctly. Vibhav is a, a fan of the channel, so, you know, show it to them as well. Uh, on the cover, we have Metal Bat, which is confusing because he's not really involved in this arc at all. Um, but with this title, go out, or these, these kind of like title words, <laughs> going all out with Fighting Spirit, we are not done yet. Could we see the hospitalized Metal Bat coming back into the fight? changing things up from the original once more. Um, I, I know that one has said in some interview, things at the Monster Association would have gone differently if Metal Bat was there. Like, Metal Bat is actually so much of a force to be reckoned with. Um, I think it's also been stated that when Metal Bat was bragging about being able to fight dragon monsters single-handedly, he wasn't kidding. He actually is that strong. So it would make a huge difference if he was uh, involved. But is he? Oh, oh, we start with, with Metal Bat right there in the hospital. Whoa, whoa. It looks like uh, this is right after the uh, uprooting of the base by Tatsumaki. We can see the Monster Association sticking out of City Z. Um, Scouts have been dispatched, of course. Metal Bat throws his gym bag containing his his iconic namesake bat out the window. The heroes are going to win, right? Don't worry, heroes won't lose. Alright, he's going to the toilet that actually sneaks out. This is crazy. This is an ex uh, a very unexpected development. Of course, we've had a bunch more monsters involved on the Monster Association side. But I thought the heroes would be roughly the same cast as we had in the uh, webcomic. All right, he changes into his full punk outfit. His shining metal bat. He got beat up pretty badly by Garo and Senior Centipede, but Senior Centipede was like a terrible matchup for him. Of all the dragon classes that uh, the Monster Association has, I feel like that's one of the worst he could have been up against. Besides, you know, like cheat code level stuff like uh, Natural Evil Water uh, that just requires uh, an entirely different axis of, of attack, an entirely different dimension that what, than most of these people have access to. Heroes won't lose. Whoa, and he, he says... All my recent opponents can be located from a distance. How convenient. Like, they're so huge, you can just see them from a distance. But just the way that he climbs up here to look at it on the horizon, it's so badass. Like, I, I think this is true for a lot of the S-Class heroes, for a lot of the, the kind of B-tier characters in the series. Like, B-tier in terms of how significant a role they have in the story. They all could be shown in protagonists, though. Not just in the, the kind of flexibility of their design, not just in the, the sort of personality they have, but even the way they behave. When they're in a chapter, it feels like they're the protagonist. They're acting like they're the protagonist. This is such like an iconic thing for a shonen protagonist to do. You know, thinking to himself, heroes never lose, surveying the situation like this. If I could glean some info on that Basidi, I still think about Garo. I'll run into the other next classes if I head over there. Let's go! 
So his name is actually Satoro-san. Interesting. A very meaning to know, to understand. Common masculine Japanese name. So his name is, you know, he's just some guy. He's just some incredibly, unfeasibly exaggerated version of a normal street punk. I love him so. One of my favorite S-class heroes. And the fact that we really don't know how strong he is. Like, could he actually solo a dragon monster? We, we don't really know yet. But we have a lot of reason to get hype for that possibility. Oh, so that's... Uh, uh, I get a little confused. I thought she was going to Metal Bat's room. But the other heroes have also started to discharge themselves. Moomin Rider, leaving an adorable note. So he's the one that has like a very, very plain name. Okay, that makes more sense. Because, you know, his whole thing is that he's kind of plain. He's just an average physique person who's in like good shape, basically. And, and this is how far he can get as a hero. This is how heroic he can become. Tank Top Master also seems to have discharged himself. Everybody's having enough of the hospital. But he is telling Moomin Rider to stop. Will he as well stop? Still civilians waiting for assistance. RNZ City. Nice. We realize the gap between us. Just about to restart my training from scratch. Not yet fully recovered. Hmm, this is kind of interesting. A, a very contrasted view of, of the role of heroes. That these two know they're injured, but they, they realize that there's still useful things they can do. Just escorting people away from the situation, cleaning up stuff. He's a little confused by this tank toppedness speech. But um, it, it, this is nice. These two, they have the right idea, I think. Metal Bat, of course, is out for blood. <laughs> he is running over there because he wants to smash his bat against as many monsters as possible, as soon as possible. <laughs> he has no consideration for other things he could be doing to help, or recovering from his injuries, which were probably nearly fatal, or anything else like that. No, 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 no. He's got the bloodlust. So I like this kind of contrast, because both of them, it, it feels like still they're both extremely heroic. And that by, by setting up this contrast, we're just sort of reinforcing this diversity of heroism. Uh, this is something that I think Boku no Hero Academia really tries to do um, in, in some of its arcs. When they, they focus on like the rescuing side. They focus on other things you need to do besides just beat up bad guys in order to be a hero. Um, but by putting these scenes back to back, it's like, you know, it's all the same spirit of heroism flowing through these guys. Already wearing a tank top in your heart. A great tank topper. <laughs> they're more than they're nothing more than decorations next to the fat. Whether someone is wearing a tank top or not. I thought this guy was always like super normie. And he was just kind of one of the, like the normie fighters of S rank. But like, what am I thinking? There are no normies in S class. S class is only full of lunatics. <laughs> and uh, his obsession with the tank top is becoming more and more evidently like uh, a debilitating quirk of his language and, and worldview rather than just kind of a fun icon to get pumped around. <laughs> a movement writer doesn't really get it. Fair enough. I don't really get it either. The tank top lives in the world of mystery. It, it lives in the uh, invisible parts of the soul. Since I have your complete approval, thank you. I'm going to accelerate. Nice, and <laughs> tank top master is riding on the back. That's adorable. This whole offers excellent ventilation. So this is the rest of the tank top crew. This is uh, in the hospital room when tank top master knocked a hole in the wall because <laughs> uh, <laughs> he was so frustrated by by having lost. That's what happened, right? That that, that sounds right. I don't remember. The rest of them rallying themselves up. Tank Top Girl, a recent member. Chasing beds after all. Ah. They realize they've been dis they've discharged themselves. Half of us are quitting after we get the bad news from here. Indeed, a pitiful fight. Oh, it's Tank Top Doctor! Do you know why Master has been wearing this type of tank top lately? Pack is clearly visible. It's a hint. Follow behind me and learn. Wow! 
Or maybe he just got that as the bulk order on Amazon when he replenished his tank top supply. Who knows? <laughs> I, I feel like there's also kind of like almost a hidden joke between tank top master and pre pre prisoner who are around the same rank have similar fighting styles of just brute force um who don't usually use any technology or anything beyond that the tank top master has this iconic clothing that he's all about the freedom and flexibility offered by the tank top the tank top brings out the true power of your muscles or whatever and then pre pre prisoner just strips naked <laughs> I don't know, there's something pretty funny about that to me. I don't think that's necessarily, like, an intentional connection or anything like that, but it strikes me as pretty funny. So that's what it was. Told us not through words, but through his outfit. Oh, this is so cute. This is so fun. Uh, I, I kind of like this pacing where you have, like, a gigantic, uh, extremely high action, some of the most, like, kind of powerful fighting we've seen in the entire series. Tatsumaki versus Psychos, ripping the whole hive up out of the ground. Every single fight being disturbed, every single hero, like, kind of checking in on their struggles. And then right at that point of super ultra climax, where, like, it seems like we're going to transition into an entirely new super critical phase of battles, we just cut to the shenanigans of the Tank Top Association. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> Uh, I love it, I love it. I think the comedy in this series is, is underrated. Like, I feel like if uh, they wanted to ever just make a pure comedy series, they have quite the duo here. In the same way that before I said that uh, one could make a horror series if you wanted. What genres can't they tackle? R romance, I guess. <laughs> I can't see that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that might be terrible. Okay, so they all ran out. Um, here we see some other Class B heroes, I think. This guy's hat says Class B. I don't recognize these guys. These are some other ones. Oh, they're all part of the Blizzard group. Well, the Blizzard group probably got the worst beating of all because they were Tatsumaki'd into Oshite Maderi. Matoi. Oshite Matoi. They're a hindrance. <laughs> that looks extremely painful to be bent into psychic pretzels and slammed against the wall. All right. <coughs> the Blizzard group has fired up themselves again as well. They can't get done in contact with Fubuki, of course, because she's quite busy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they're going to go help out too. I, I like that. Moon Tank Toppers for Buki Group. These are the uh, heroes that were injured in the tournament. Sharenko is not going to bother. He's just going to chill and eat the, the bananas provided by Saitama. <laughs> nice little throwback to another very funny comedic scene. They all think of Gotetsu and shudder in fear. Sucks to admit, but it's not our time to step up just yet. <gasps> Ooh, is this Suiru? Yeah, looking friggin' jacked as always. They fight just as well as those pedestrian heroes. <laughs> she really did bring some dangerous stuff to the hospital. How did they let her in with all this? This is, uh, what is her name? I want to say it's like Ring Ring or Ling Ling or something. Um, it'd be cool to see all these characters in action, maybe. Palm Bell Fist, Silent Martial Art, with inner calmness, the bells wouldn't ring, right? Been ringing nonstop since a moment ago, you know. Oh, that's such cute, tiny little lore. A tiny little bit of world building that just, you can picture like a whole character. Well, we do have a whole character based on it, but like a major character. Like, like that's a character quirk that can, that can help sustain an entire series. That you have bells attached to you, so you need a calm inner mind. So that the bells never ring. But if you, you're too jittery, as you're reading shonen manga, the bells start shaking. And then it betrays your, your unreadiness, you know? Um, that kind of like purposeful self-handicapping just as a challenge. That's pretty cool. That's so cool. It's such a kind of romantic idea. I don't know. 
Um, and yet, this is probably the only time we're ever going to see it. It's just this one panel makes this tiny little world building reference. Fantastic. Heroes true value lies in their resolve, their inner strength, and yielding spirit that pushes them to help others without hesitation, even if they're at their limit, facing extreme danger. In our current state, we will only end up holding them back in a critical moment to train harder and become stronger, both physically and mentally. I want to become a hero. What a lovely shot. Suru has come so far. And of course, if you're reading the webcomic, some uh, pretty uh, other exciting developments with Suru and his family and other such things. But we will get to that in the remake probably sometime around 2027, but we'll get there. Okay, so after all of our hospital shenanigans, getting a bunch more heroes en route to the scene, we return with these really gorgeous shots of the Monster Association headquarters. It's so cool because like, before it had this mysterious depth to it, that it just seemed like endlessly fractal, all these tunnels, all these layers, the aesthetic changing so quickly with that, the complex M.C. Escher-esque geometry keeping all these really disparate places connected together. Now it has become something entirely different because of Tatsumaki's uprooting. Uh, it has a whole new sense of intimidation to it. Um, now, now it's like right when we can finally comprehend the scope of it, perhaps, while fighting in the big chasms of it, that scope now, like, we can see the full power of its hugeness as it conquers the skyline and it's been, can be spotted from miles and miles and miles away. Amazing. Amazing. Uh-oh. So, uh, they're trapped down somewhere under the rocks. The monster guide! Oh, no! Oh, he's so naive thinking that he could get punched like that and still be more than just a few scattered particles. But I hope they don't, don't kill off my my little Mike Wachowski son. He's so cute. He's been such a help to them <laughs> eventually. <laughs> and they've helped him too. I feel like maybe eventually this guy will turn into a pet, <laughs> like Rover and Black Sperm. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> This is like an attack on Titan. <laughs> when, when they and he smashes the wall and you just see the Titan's face. <laughs> That's an amazing shot. <laughs> uh, so the comedy of these three continues. Looks like maybe this will be just like a little comedy tour chapter. Actually, the hospital arcs had some much more kind of resolute and, and strong moments, but there was a levity to it. There was a, an, a kind of a... Uh, a positivity to it. Ooh, you can generate light from your eye. <laughs> Flash is just talking through the hole in the rocks. The situation got a lot worse. In all this massive collapse, other heroes might have become dangerously trapped as well. So turn to the battlefront as soon as possible. <laughs> Saitama can share in the comedy. Just share in this this awkward silence with their little monster buddy. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> the nice diffuse lighting reflected off uh, Saitama's bald head. <laughs> uh, all their faces when they get lit up is so good too. Oh, it's just fantastic. <laughs> this charger is so silly. <laughs> No, oh, uh oh, this is the exact situation they're talking about. Remove one rock, more rocks might start falling. <laughs> this is Jenga esque. This little Jenga instruction is really good too. <laughs> it still lands on Saitama when he removes it. Nice, nice. Thanks, Eyeball. Alright, <laughs> so the. Uh, 
The long Jenga puzzle of light speed flash begins. Try to name it as Mechana Manacle. Also means eyeball. <laughs> oh! Oh no! She was a girl all along. I'm sorry. I've been misgendering Manako. She's been a good friend. <laughs> Kate Baldi. <laughs> hey, whoa! I don't know about this. Manako calls out the lameness of flashy flash. The redundancy of it. I liked it even better back when everyone was translating Flashy Flash as Lightspeed Flash. Because that sounds like a cool name at first, but then you realize that like Flash and Lightspeed imply the exact same thing. It's like speed of sound Sonic. Sonic means the speed of sound. And and that's kind of like foreshadowing to the fact that, you know, webcomic spoilers, they're, they're part of, of the same ninja village and, and they have all this backstory together and that all the ninjas of the village have similarly redundant names. I think that's hilarious. But I really liked how nobody ever called it out in the series itself, that it was almost a joke that existed like above the series. But if anyone was going to call it out, I, I like that it's it's Manico, <laughs> my girl. <laughs> Can't stand for such a lame name. <laughs> my name is Saitama. <laughs> Barry's flash it kept because he's tired of getting insulted. Ah... Lovely, lovely. I heard about this, that they're making a live-action movie. It's gonna be trash. I I don't see how it can't be trash. I'll, I'll, I'll just throw it out right now and, and lay my life on this take. And, uh, you know, a couple years down the road when it's actually kind of in the swing of production and I find out that the director is like... <laughs> I, I don't know, it's being produced by A24 Pictures. The director is... Um, Let's see, who would be good? What's his face? Robert Eggers? Is that his name? Yeah, Robert Eggers is directing it, and it's this, like, intense, lonely movie about Saitama, like, losing his mind and, and control over his powers because he feels so isolated from the world, from his godly position of power, and it it becomes this like psychedelic metaphorical tour de force uh, taking place in an unclear liminal space between the sensory perception of Saitama and the carnage and destruction around him with these incredible Hollywood tier special effects and yet this haunting unquenchable fire within it that when you watch it you just feel like clenched up and on the er the, the the very on the, the very verge of breaking down in tears or, or bursting out in maniacal laughter. A masterpiece for the ages. But that's not gonna happen. It's gonna be trash. <laughs> it's gonna be so trash. They literally just take any property that's doing okay, that's that has some chance of being recognized by people, and they pull a director's name out of a hat, call them up and say, Do you want to make like twelve million dollars? They say, sure, what do I have to do? And they say, don't worry, we'll tell you exactly what to do. And then they hire uh, 500 people to watch uh, a billion permutations of cuts of this movie, and they find the one that everyone voted on. And it's boring, <laughs> and it's just lame action scenes back to back to back, and, and all of the charm and the humor of the original is gone. Uh, all of the kind of interesting themes and philosophical questions of the original is gone. All of that has been replaced by like quip core comedy, where Saitama over and over again will walk into a scene, punch some knees, and 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 then as a cheeky nod to the fans, they'll go, "Thought today was sale day," or something stupid that reveals they don't really understand the original joke. I'm very cynical about Hollywood, but uh, I think I have every right to be. <laughs> Good goodbye for now. That was a really nice chapter, though. I, I love the restraint that after, again, building to such an insane climax with the last chapter, the, the scale of power becoming beyond what we've seen in the series outside of Saitama, basically. Um, and then taking a step back. Look, excuse me, looking at all these other characters. Plus it's super hype that Metal Bat is going to be involved. I just, I just love that character. Okay. That's all for now. Bye-bye.